6.7, we're going to look at some financial applications for um, exponential equations and how to set them up and solve them. So I'm going to start out by giving you formulas and then um, explaining what each of the variables stands for. So for simple interest, I is going to equal P times R times T. Compound interest, we have A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N raised to the power of N times T. Continuously compound interest, A equals P times E to the R times T. And then we have effective rate of interest. There's two of those, and we use R sub E for them. I'm going to explain what all these letters are and what all these formulas mean in a moment. And then purchasing power, A equals P times 1 minus R to the N. Okay, let's go back and talk about what all the letters mean and when we use each of these formulas. Simple interest. Simple interest is just like interest that is calculated um, one time at the end of the time period. So if I borrow some money from my friend and I'm like, hey, I'll pay you back 10% interest then however long I keep the money, if I borrowed, you know, 500 bucks, I would just at the end pay them 550 bucks because that would be the interest that I would owe um, if I kept it for one year. Let's say I kept it for five years, then it would be 50 bucks for each of those years. So I'd end up owing them like 750. Regardless, let's talk about the letters. So in this formula, I is going to be the interest like it's the amount of interest. The amount of interest that's either earned or paid. So you can also be the lender, uh, which also includes like investments or um, putting things in a savings account. P. P is the principal. And that's going to be consistent throughout all of our formulas. So I'm only going to define this one time. So in this formula, P is principal. In this formula, P is principal. In this formula, P is principal. Um, this formula is not. I don't know why they would use the same letter, but they do. So these three here, P is principal, which is the original amount that's either borrowed or lended, or if you have a situation where it's like, population growth. That would be the original population. There are a lot more applications to these um, exponents and logarithm things that we've been studying, but we are just not going to have time to get to anything beyond financial applications um, in 2020, 2021 because COVID. So this is going to be our last section for this current school year. Unless you're watching this from another school or at some time in the future, and then you might get to do some other stuff. Anyway, back to the letters. R is the interest rate. And when we talk about interest rate, we need that to be as a decimal, not as a percent. So let's talk about how to make things from a percent into a decimal. So if I have like 25% and I want to make that into a decimal, then I'm going to take where my decimal point is, which is at the end of the 25, and I move it to the left two places. So 25% becomes 0.25. 5% move my decimal two places becomes 0 0.05. So to change from a percent into a decimal, we're going to move 
the decimal place two times to the left. Then T is going to be time. And that is typically done in years unless it's specified like the interest rate is a monthly interest rate or something. Um, okay, Con that's different than compounded monthly. So as long as your interest rate and your time are compatible, which in this section is always going to be measured in years, then you have nothing to worry about. So time, we'll just say, generally is in years. So the R is going to be consistent. This R is interest rate. 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 The T is going to be consistent. Time, time, time. There's no T in these. And then the next formula has an additional letter. So compound interest, this is not simple interest. Compound interest is calculated more than one time, like more than just at the end of the term of the loan. Compound interest is, is figured out multiple times. So that's the reason we have this additional variable. This letter N represents the number of times the interest is compounded per year. So N, both of these N's is the number of times interest is compounded per year. So let's look at some scenarios. If we are compounding annually, then n will equal 1. If we are compounding monthly, then we would compound 12 times a year, so n would be 12. If we are compounding semi-annually, That means we compound two times a year, so n would be two, uh, versus biannually. Biannually means every other year, so n would be 0.5. Uh, quarterly, so that would be four times a year. And weekly, that would be 52 times per year. Okie dokie. Ooh, we do have another new letter here, A. A is not the amount of interest. Remember, I was the amount of interest. A is the amount that we have after time, whatever T is. So one year, two years, 17 months. Has passed. So it's like the balance in the account. So if I leave my money in there for seven years, it would be how much actual money is in my account after seven years. This one doesn't tell me how much money I owe, it just tells me how much interest I owe. And then I have to add that onto my principal to know how much to pay. This one is everything all included. It's how much is all together there. Continuously compound interest. So that is interest that is not compounded a certain number of times per year. It's compounded all the time. Like it's always adding up. It's so like if I um, were to take my money out of the account at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday, I would have a different amount of money than I would if I take my money out at 8 a.m. on a Tuesday. So this A is the same as that A. P is the same as the principal here. R is the same interest rate. T is the same time. Um, the difference is E, but E is a number. 
Remember, E is approximately 2.718, 4590, 45. We studied it in, I don't know, section, I don't know, 6.3 maybe? Anyway, it's just a number. Um, it's a place you can find it on your calculator. This is also a growth and decay model, A equals PE to the RT. We are unfortunately not going to get to study it as a growth and decay model uh, because Again, that's, we're not getting to that this year, but we can, oops, we can use this same formula to figure out how long it will take for my money to double or triple. So I'm going to write a little memo about that. To find the amount of time it would take for my money to double my money we don't know how we don't have to know how much we're starting with um, it will end up being the same no matter what you start with what we're going to do is we're going to use 2p or A and then solve and then also you can figure it out for tripling your money we would just use 3P for A we'll get to see an example of that um, effective rate of interest this is the annual, like what rate would I need for an annual interest rate, like a simple interest rate that would give me the same amount of money at the end of a year for either compounding continuously or n times per year. So this is the simple interest rate. Remember simple interest was this formula that would be, that would result in the same amount of interest as one of these two formulas if I were to kind of switch up my account. So that'll tell me like at the end of, you know, five years compounding four times per year, what actual interest rate did I pay? What simple interest rate did I actually pay? So this R E, R sub E, this is a simple interest rate. And then all of the rest of these mean the same thing as they did before. So this formula is the one that goes with compounded n times per year. And this formula is the one that is continuously compounded. So two different formulas for that effective interest rate. And then we have purchasing power. Purchasing power has to do with inflation. So we know that, you know, a, a $1950 would buy a lot more today than a $2021 because of inflation. So looking at the purchasing power this formula tells us the amount of a dollars so the amount a that p dollars will purchase in n years oops years at an inflation rate of r so r is our inflation rate n is the number of years 
that would have passed, and then A and P are dollar amounts. Okay, let's look at some examples. If I invest $500 now, how much will I have at the end of 16 years? My account pays 3.5% interest compounded quarterly. So compounding quarterly is the compound interest formula. So that's the formula we're going to be using. That formula was A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N raised to the N times T power. So let's figure out what we know in here. I'm investing $500 now. So the $500 now is my principal. P equals 500. How much money will I have at the end? That is A. So A is the thing we don't know. 16 years, that's T. So T equals 16. Uh, my account pays 3.5% interest. So that's my interest rate R. And I got to move my decimal two places. So R would be 0 0.035. And compounded quarterly, that's N. So quarterly means four times a year, so N would be four. So I'm just going to write in my formula, A, which is what I don't know, equals P, 500, times 1 plus R, 0 0.035, divided by N, which is 4, raised up to the power of N times T, so 4 times 16. We definitely need to use our calculators to do this. Um, what I will usually do is I will do the um, 1 plus 0 0.035 divided by 4 first, and then I will raise that up to my power next, and then I will multiply by 500. So let's get some calculator steps written down so that we remember how to do this in our calculator without writing down all the steps. So the first thing I'll do in my calculator, I will do 1 plus 0 0.035 divided by 4, and then I'm going to hit enter or equals. So 1 plus 0 0.035 divided by 4, enter. And I don't know, if I'm taking a test, I'll probably write those numbers down just in case my calculator does something weird um, so that I can get partial credit. But when I'm just working, I'm probably not writing those down. And then I'm going to hit the caret key to the 64th power and then hit enter again. So caret to the 64 because my calculator will take my answer to the 64th power and 4 times 16 was 64. Enter. And then I'm going to multiply that, so times 500, and then enter. And then that's going to give me my answer. And then I'm going to round because money. So when I round, I'm going to round to the nearest penny. So it will be, that would be 20.66995 cents. So I'm going to round that to 21 cents. So my ending answer would be $873.21. So at the end of 16 years, that's how much money I would have. Make sure that you wait to round at the last step. Because if you round in the middle, 
like if I were to have rounded back here when I did 1 plus 0 0.035 divided by 4, um, then I would end up getting wrong answers after that because I'd be off due to rounding errors. So wait till round till the last step. Number two, how long would it take for an investment to triple in value if it earns in 2.75% interest in an account that is compounded continuously? So that is my continuously compound interest formula. That formula was A equals P times E to the R times T. Let's look at what we know. Uh, how long, so it's wanting to know how long, so that's going to be our time, we don't know. Would it take for an investment to triple in value? So remember when we talked about that tripling in value, um, we're going to use 3P for our A value. It earns 2.75% interest, so that is our rate. Um, we have to move our decimal two places, so 0 0.0275, in an account that is compounding continuously, which told us to use that formula. So replacing A with 3P equals P times E, to the R, which is 0 0.0275 T, which is the thing we don't know. So it appears that we have a whole lot of variables, but these are going to clear out pretty quickly. To start with, I'm going to divide both sides by P, and that's going to allow that P to cancel and this P to cancel, actually. So now I'm down to just one variable, even though it looks like two. It looks like two because of the E, but remember E is just a number. And we have a strategy for solving this equation. We looked at those in section six. Um, this is a variables in exponents. So one thing we can do is take the natural log of both sides. So we have natural log of 3 equals natural log of e to the 0.0275t. And the reason we use that strategy is so we can bring that exponent down in front so it's no longer up in the power. Now it is a multiplication. So we have 0.0275t times natural log of e. But remember that we've seen a few times that the natural log of E is actually equal to 1. So that natural log of E doesn't even need to be there, which means I can then divide both sides of my equation by 0 0.0275, which will leave T on its own. So then the exact value for T would be the natural log of 3 divided by 0 0.0275. Uh, but we're probably going to want a decimal approximation. So we'll use our calculator. We'll do the natural log of 3. I'm going to hit enter. Divided by 0 0.0275, which gives me approximately 39.94953. It looks like that's going to repeat, but I don't know for sure. Uh, so a couple of things that might happen. They might want us to round to a specific decimal place. So we might say it's about 39.95 years if that's where they want us to round. Or we might say about 40 years. Um, but we're going to want to watch because if they ask us how long, how many years until our investment at least triples, then we'd have to always go up to the next year. So that would be 40 years. But even if it came out to like 39.04, we would have to round up to the nearest the next year because if it says until it's at least tripled, then at 39 years it would not have tripled. So we'd have to go up to the next 40 year. 
but about that many years. Okay, example number three. If I want to end up with $2,000 after 10 years, how much will I need to invest now in an account that pays 8% monthly interest? So the formula we're using is our compound interest formula. And I can tell that because it says monthly interest. So the compound interest formula was A equals P times one plus R divided by N to the power of N times T. So the things we know in this problem, uh, I want to end up with $2,000. So that is my A. That is the amount I have at the end after 10 years. So T is 10. How much will I need to invest now? That's my principal. That's how much I'm starting with. In an account that pays 8% monthly interest, so R is 0 0.08, and monthly means it will be compounded 12 times per year. So filling in my formula, A will be replaced with 2,000 equals P is what we don't know, times 1 plus R, which is 0 0.08, divided by N, which is 12, up to the power of 12 times T, which was 10. So, um, I can kind of write down some stuff here. One plus, let's see if that comes out nicely. One plus 0 0.08 divided by 12. Oof, it does not. unfortunately. So we'll just leave it like that. I can replace that with 120, I guess. So what I'll want to do is divide both sides by that parenthesis. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by this giant parenthesis, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12 to the power of 120. And so the exact value for P will be 2,000 over this whole mess. But we're for sure going to want a decimal approximation because it's a story problem. Like, I want to know how much money. I don't, that doesn't tell me how much money to put in my account. So I'm going to use my calculator. And the way that I would probably do this is I would take the stuff in the parentheses. So I would do 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12 and then enter. Okay. Let's see if you can see everything. Uh, that There's a word over there that says enter, but I don't want to. There. That'll help. Okay. There we go. So 1 plus. Oh, I already did that. So 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12, enter. Then I'm going to raise that up to the power of 120 and hit enter. So up to the power of 120, enter. And then what I need to do is take 2,000. So the number I have right now is that denominator. So then what I need to do is take my numerator 2,000 and divide it by that answer that I just got. And that uh, the way that I get that answer to show up on my calculator is to push the second button and then the negative button. In case you're unfamiliar with doing that, so I'll need to do 2,000 divided by second negative key, which puts answer in there, and then enter. And since this is money, I'm going to round to the nearest penny, unless it tells me something different. It may say round to the nearest dollar, but I'm going to round to the nearest penny. So I need to invest $901.05 
so that I will have $2,000 after 10 years.